Hello, Inspired Nation. I'm so excited to be on here this morning. It is our Tuesday tips at 10 o'clock. And today we're going to talk about how to uh, prepare to move ourselves forward as uh, some of you uh, maybe in states that are reopening. I know that uh, we just got an announcement here in Georgia yesterday that some of our businesses are opening. Um, and as it begins to reopen over the next month or so throughout the United States, hopefully we're all crossing our fingers that we are moving forward um, through this. But what I want to talk about today is just some tips on things that we can do as we begin to move forward. Now, if you're jumping on here, we are, um, there's instructions up in the, the post that for me to be able to see your comments, as, you know, with your name on it, um, if you'll click that button, otherwise it just shows that you are just a Facebook user. And I'd love to be able to uh, address or answer any of your questions specifically. And of course, if you're watching this back on replay later, make sure you do hashtag replay. It lets me know that you uh, have come back and, and watched it. And um, one of the things we're moving forward online. So we've got someone here. Uh, make sure, like I said, I don't know who is speaking to me here. So make sure go right up above in the post. You'll see where it says uh, uh, to be able to show your information on uh, the live stream. Click here on the StreamYard link. So make sure and do that. One of the things we're going to do. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about some ways you can prepare as you're moving forward, whether or not you choose to open up or you're in a place that opens up, you know, next week or next month. OK, these are things that no matter what I think you have to do now in order to get ready to move forward. And we're going to look at it more as an opportunity. Right. So we're going to move forward um, with the thought process of, uh, you know, that you made it through here. Maybe some of you have been able to, you know, keep going and keep growing your business. Some of you. Um, you may have been holding your breath and, you know, hoping, you know, as you make it through the other side and some of you, it's going to feel like a completely relaunch of a brand new business. And so I understand that we have a variety. And unfortunately, I know that um, some people, uh, you know, what's what it's going to look like on the other side of this, you know, won't be what it was before we went into it. Um, so all we can do is just kind of, you know, kind of look at things and keep moving forward. Let me look at some of the comments over here. Um, we are reopening on Monday to actually plan on May 4th, but I've got too many customers that are patiently waiting for us. Um, Premier Appliance of Augusta. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, you've been pretty busy uh, getting a lot of tags over the last few weeks. It's funny until everybody um, was out there uh, sheltering in place. I didn't realize how many uh, people needed so many services. How many of you have been, it's been crazy what the in search ofs and the recommendations have been um, out on Facebook and how many of my referral partners or contacts I've been able to tag and recommend um, even during this time, even if it's to set up appointments, you know, a month from now or two months from now. So um, business is still happening. So what can we do now to get ready and on the other side of this? So um, one is, it, I'm going to say this and everybody's going to be like, Amy, that's easier said than done or, or done, um, but it's to grow your client base. Okay. And what I mean by that is I want you guys now why you've got the time. Okay. And this is something that I, I usually go in and train with, you know, when I do corporate training. So this isn't something that's just because we're in sheltering in place. In fact, we call this our profit to profitable uh, training. And it's how to kind of go from looking at your client base as a single transaction to something that's going to be a sustainable business, you know, a strategy for you. So, one challenge that I would have you do now, which is easier now than it is when things are going crazy, is uh, go ahead and take an inventory. You know, some of you might have a CRM system, Excel spreadsheet. Maybe you have a, a customer list in QuickBooks. Um, if you can figure out a way to have something that you can have a custom field, then I would encourage you to go ahead and set up some custom fields. And one way that we do this is we have uh, our clients go back and, and look at their client base. And if you can begin to categorize your clients by A clients, B clients, C clients, D clients, you can come up with whatever tags you want to. Um, for me, an A client, and I'm actually teaching a webinar on this. In fact, let me go ahead and put that up so you guys can be able to see that information. 
Let me come back out here. Um, it's an A client for me is a client that I can, you know, I can check off all of these things. One, the product and service that they are paying me for is one that I enjoy doing. Okay. So if you have a business that has multiple product and services, there could be something that, yes, yeah, someone could pay you for, but it's like the last thing you, you, you know, you don't make any money from it, or it's the last product or service that you enjoy providing, but it's something that you do with an a client i want you to think about this is when that phone rings and they're buying this you're excited about that <clears throat> about the product or service you enjoy providing it um, whether or not um, especially if if the product or service is your personal time you're putting into that client the other is is that the product or service that they're buying from you makes you money OK, so think about that. It has a nice profit margin. And, you know, I have different clients that buy different things from me, different trainings, different designs that we do, different graphic work, different marketing. And some of them have different profit margins. Some of them I enjoy really doing a lot better than the others. So if I can get a client base that, yes, I enjoyed the product or service that they bought. Yes, that particular product or service has a nice profit margin for me. And then the other thing is, is that this client also refers me to others. So if you think about it, if I, if I enjoy the product or service, the product or service makes me money. And that particular client is really good about going out and telling other people about me, then that client for me is an A client, a VIP client. And so then, you know, so if you're looking at your client list, you know, it's really nice if you can take it to Excel and basically kind of do an X, you know, through each of the columns. And when you come up with one that has the check marks or X on all three of those things, then obviously that client moves up to the top. And then a B client for me is someone who gets some of those three attributes. You know, yes, they provide uh, the product or service I enjoy doing the most, it's maybe they're not my most uh, financially uh, sound client as far as making me money, but they refer other people or maybe they refer other people, but they're not necessarily the client that makes me the most money. So there's different ways you can go through it. And obviously you can come up with what are the things that would make someone your ideal client. And then of course, as you move through it, you would have C clients and then D clients. And one of the things I want you to focus on right now is once you've identified those A clients, okay, those A clients, now is the time to then go look and go, what really, other than the other attributes we've talked about, how can we describe those A clients? And um, is there any similar traits? What was the challenge that made them pick up the phone and call you? Um, what is it? You know, where do they live? Is there any, you know, anything about them that's, you know, maybe uh, their geographics? Is it the position they have in their company? You know, when you can begin to identify uh, a pattern of what makes that a client for you, then you are now equipped with understanding the attributes of your target market, your ideal target market. Okay. And like I said, we're going to go deep in, into this particular training tomorrow night on our um, webinar, Wednesday night webinar. But this is a way you can begin to think about it. So as you start moving out of this sheltering in place and, and relaunching your business or reopening your business right now, over the next few weeks, as you you know, start evaluating, you know, how do we get out there again? How do we start marketing ourselves? Or some of you might be still marketing right here online and meeting. When you're choosing your graphics, when you're choosing your social media post, when you're choosing which events you're being visible at or which groups you're joining or, you know, the way you're going to advertise, maybe some of you, your advertising budget might be a little slimmer, you know, coming on the other side of this. So being very, particular be very efficient in the target market that you're trying to attract to you that boomerang effect what you throw out there is what you're going to get back so you don't want to just have this shotgun approach of throwing everything out there and hoping the spaghetti you know sticks to the refrigerator like instead you want to be able to say look this is a client base that we've identified or our top vip client base if we could duplicate that over and over and over again, then that will help us move forward 
right? More efficiently. And so you want to think about that. So yes, growing your client base is a strategy, but doing it in a way that is actually going to put your business in a better place on the other side of it. Now may also be the time to look at those D clients and the D clients are those that you may need to disengage from. And I know that sounds harsh, but how many of you have ever had client base that has actually cost you money? Okay. That client base has cost you money by maybe taking up way more time than the investment or the return on investment that you're going to make from it. And so it's one of those things that every now and then professionally, you have to probably disengage from a client base. And there's all different kinds of ways that you can do that. But now is a time to take an inventory of your client base and make sure as you're moving forward, that you're moving forward with a client base that will actually help you continue to be there. OK, as we're going through, you know, a lot of unknowns that we have, uh, you know, coming up in front of us. So now is a really good time to look at that client base and then duplicate it what you want. All right. That's what you're looking for. Another thing is a good time right now is to go look. And I'm sure a lot of you have done this over the last few weeks, but let's go look at it one more time from the business aspect, your business finances. What are some things that um, that you absolutely have to have? You know, and for me, it's sometimes it's those hidden expenses that um, we always have to go back, you know, maybe, a, you know, a small monthly charge to have, you know, a, an app that we use every now and then for the business. Um, what is it that, you know, what is it that we're paying for, you know, software wise, expense wise, and, and really going and making sure that what you decide to keep as your expenses is necessary for you to be able to take care of those VIP clients, right? And so uh, now's the time to go and look at your inventory, your expenses, okay? And make sure what you're keeping, you absolutely need. And, um, and this may also be a time where, you know, some of you uh, have to make that decision. Do you pay the annual fee? which you get the discount on, or is it uh, something that you have to pay a monthly subscription on until the cash flows back again? And then, you know, then transition it back over to an annual, uh, an annual subscription and annual licensing. So just go through and see if there's any way right now that you can go and trim your expenses up as you're moving forward. Another is, is a lot of you during this time have discovered a new way to go out there and grow your business. Uh, some of you have gotten really creative with new products and new services over the last month or so. And so now's the time to really look at, do you keep those product and services? Um, what does it look like on the other side when you're not sheltering in place and you're not, you know, uh, growing your business? Is it something that, um, you're going to be able to keep moving forward when you're back out again. And is it something you're going to be able to maintenance that particular client base or that particular revenue stream? And if so, then, you know, then that's in addition to what you offered in the past. Um, for some of you, I've heard a lot of clients that they've actually discovered that this has been a good way. It's made them, uh, focus on how to grow their business, to learn new things online, uh, how to use some of these tools that are out there and available. You know, over the last few weeks, they've had to get out of their comfort zone and grow their business using video technology, um, using Zoom, using Facebook Live. And uh, in a way, they're like, hey, this has actually been a great uh, a, a great addition to my business at a time, obviously when we need it, but it's something they're going to hang on to. And if that's you, I'd love to have you guys comment on that. You know, what is something that you've done over the last few weeks that you're going to continue moving forward with that it's, it's been actually a, a good thing to make you do something that took you out of your comfort zone. Um, it gave you a little bit of time to master a new technique that you're going to be able to move forward with. I'd love to have you guys share that information out there so that others can see, you know, how, you know, we haven't all just been sitting there, um, you know, eating bonbons. We've been learning different ways to grow our business. And so um, we'd love to be able to hear uh, some of that from all of you. 
another thing, some of you have been able to, because of going virtual, you've discovered that you have a client base that maybe is outside of your normal zip code or your state. Uh, maybe you've been able to grow a client base um, nationally or in, even internationally. So now you're sitting there thinking, what could this look like? And uh, to explore that opportunity, you know, how do we make sure we can, you know, capture that client base going forward. So um, for a lot of you, I'd love for you guys, you know, to uh, share that in the comments. You know, what does that look like for you? How many of you have been able to uh, grow your business um, outside of your normal uh, zip code during this time. I know here at Inspired, we began to open up a lot of things virtually, our meetings, and began to really uh, kind of open the door. And we uh, have had, uh, I think, one meeting last week, we had representatives from like five or six different states. And we even have some people that are uh, in our global community. And we're looking forward to being able to continue and to build on that as we go forward um, in the future. So what does that look like for you? We'd love to you know, have some information out there from all of you. And then, of course, I think it's important to reflect, you know, where, where your business was and how things were operating before you know the this time we'll call it this time the covid um you know shelter in place what were some things that you had to do to pivot or to keep your business up and going um i think coming up with a a plan a crisis plan of uh these are the steps that you know we had to put in place these you know this is where you know how we had to you know switch our business uh whether or not it was from doing live events to virtual events whether it was servicing our clients um i've seen a lot of you know the restaurants um, i've seen people build um takeout windows i've seen people um you know do shop uh shop online and and you know basically, you know, walk out of their, their uh, retail store and deliver the product. Um, everybody's done all these different things. So, you know, having a plan in place where, or a system in place that if this happens, this is what we do. Okay. Um, you know, this is the system. This is how we basically can move our business um, in a time, uh, you know, of say a crisis or, you know, the holidays or um, someone gets sick or, or you know, or someone goes on vacation. What are the steps you need to take in order to keep moving your business forward? And now is a really good time to take an honest look at, you know, is your business, what did you have to do? And um, for some of you, I think, and I know I've heard this from a lot of my clients, they've actually been very surprised at um, what, what they had to do to pivot. Some of it was painful. Some of it was easier than what they thought. But uh, take, you know, take almost like a journal. What did you do? Um, what worked? What could you do easier next time or faster next time to make sure, you know, you're there and ready to go? Um, you know, that way you can always go back and look at and say this, this was a good thing or this was something we need to work on. Um, for some of you who have employees and and staff, you know, to have a, a, a crisis plan in place, ready to go, I think is extremely important as much as, you know, if how do you come out on the other side of the crisis too? So, uh, you know, I think having an understanding of what do you do when this happens and then how do we recover, you know, have a plan for that also. And these are just some things I wanted to throw out here for you guys today. Um, if you're jumping on here, uh, tell me real quick, we've got several people on here. Um, what are some things that specifically to your business that you've seen, um, you know, and again, you can answer this back on replay. What are some good things that you've seen for your business or as you've gone through this time, um, what are some positives that you can take from, um, either slowing down enough to work, you know, uh, on your business you know what are some things you've done to work on your business when you haven't necessarily had the time to work in your business um 
how many of you have been able to uh, really reach out to your client base and, and have that time for client retention activities where, you know, reaching out, calling your clients, calling your strategic partners and just checking on them. Uh, I'd love to hear you guys share some of that information. You know, what, what, you know, how that's helped you, uh, even if it hasn't necessarily contributed directly to your bottom line right now, like you can't immediately say I did this action and, you know, I can see it in my bottom line. How did it make you feel, you know, mentally to be able to be able to have that time, maybe some extra time to reach out to your client base, um, just, you know, let them know, ask them how you could help them. Even if it wasn't for your personal business, just to reach out to them and ask them how you could help them you know, what are some things that you guys have done with that? And then the other thing that we challenged people to, to let us know also, so we'd love to hear this on the inspired is what are some of the things you've done in the past? Let's just talk about referral marketing. What are some things that you've done in the past by attending networking events or, um, you know, doing, uh, strategy sessions or developing strategic alliances, things that you were doing in the past just because it was the thing that, you know, a mechanism you were using to grow your business. How has that helped you now, you know, over the last month or so as we've been shelter in place? We've been asking our clients this because obviously we train referral marketing. So we've been asking some of our groups this. We're asking Inspired Nation, everyone who's watching this. We would love your feedback and your success stories of how, you know, when you didn't know you really needed it the way you need it now, when you were out there using referral marketing, strategic alliance, you know, building those uh, joint workshops, uh, collaborations, industry collaborations, you know, all those things that you were probably, you know, just doing because those were the things that were part of your normal strategy of growing your business. How did that help you now? And how, you know, what were some of the things that you were able to lean into that really became a forefront of how you were able to continue to move forward through this time? Um, you know, feel free to, to share your success stories. That's what we're looking for. Um, you know, if, if they're part of this group or part of here, you know, tag them, let them know and say a thank you uh, because that person may have helped you or you may have been able to help them. Um, we're really looking for some feedback on that. And of course, we always love celebrating and, and sharing those success stories here. So just a reminder, some things that are going on here with Inspired that will give you guys a chance to continue to uh, work on your business. Um, obviously, tomorrow night we have uh, a, a webinar and it's a live webinar where you can jump on. Uh, you know, whoever's on there, we work with them. We're going to be actually teaching how to uh, really identify your ideal client base. And so um, we invite you guys to do that. You can go out to inspiredignite.com to uh, go to the event tab, and then you'll see all the, all our events that are out there, but you want to register. Uh, we'll be putting that out there so you can register for that particular uh, webinar for tomorrow night. And then on Thursday, we have our iNetwork. So we have two iNetwork meetings. Uh, one is at 1130 uh, a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so we have different people on here at different time zones. Um, and you can jump on that. It is a mastermind roundtable uh, type agenda where we come in as business professionals. We have an agenda where um, we all get to know each other. We share an educational piece and then we all can um, ask for a call to action, how we can help each other in our business. So we welcome you to uh, join us for that. So we have one of those at 1130 on Thursday and then another one at 7 p.m. on Thursday evening. And so we encourage any of you who are watching this, if you're a business professional and you just need to connect with other positive forward thinking business professionals. We invite you to join us in the I network meetings and because uh, we'd love to be able to connect and learn how we can help you continue to move forward. So those are some different things that are going on here at Inspired. And I just want to thank everybody for jumping on here and joining us again for our Tuesday tips at 10 o'clock. And remember to go out and inspire others.